All right, well, I was not wanting to make this video as soon as I am. I mean, I guess it's going to make me uh, get down and dirty with this thing, I guess, uh, to get some footage out for it. I, I don't know. Excuse my dirty face. I've been welding all day. That's what I do for my job now. In this video, we're going to have a live stream here in a couple hours, so uh, it's going to be a weird, like, probably cut in the video. Um, and then you guys will probably, for those of you that see this, probably see in the live stream, but... Figured, let's uh, do a teardown of the old Jay-Z here because, yeah, you guys saw in the very last video of the car, I was doing a draggy, and kablooey, man, let me tell you, this thing is completely destroyed. So on a whim, I came out here last night and pulled my turbo off, and so nothing went through the engine. The turbo's still good. We're, we're golden. So, uh, if you guys saw that last video, the car was still running, okay? It was still it was still running whenever I uh, threw a rod. Uh, still, it still turns over and everything. So, um, it was literally just running on five cylinders on, on limiter. It's time to tear this thing apart. Uh, one thing I do want you guys to know is that the car is not going to be down as long as it was last year. The only reason the car was so like it took so long last year was because that manifold was being made um and it wasn't even that that wasn't like the thing it was the manifold before that that i i got from uh, miguel it was miggy built whatever freaking it doesn't even matter guy is not a good business guy at all uh it took like seven months to get it was like eight months or something like that and uh Ended up scratching that thing out. I sold it when I got it, but I, I had my guy Ryan make me this manifold here, which is everything I ever wanted, except the turbo and the intercooler. It's freaking amazing. So it was that, the cage, and my tube fronts, and all the custom welding and stuff, thanks to Merle, that was the reason it took a little bit longer. But since everything is all done already, this is going to be a very easy, quick removal, and a very easy, quick, you know to put the freaking you know engine we're gonna get the engine on the stand so finally gonna utilize the shop for what i was actually planning on having done um so finally solid floors and finally i'm gonna go get my engine hoist and stuff from austin tomorrow and uh we're gonna be going to get a new engine yes i have a guy and i've got access to lots of engines so I'm going to be getting a bare block from him, and I'm going to be getting a complete long block. Unfortunately, they're not non-VVTI. They are the GE. But let me uh, give you guys the old hot spice here. This is something I don't think I showed you guys at all ever. Um, so this is what we are going to be putting in rice box now. So we're done playing around. So we're gonna go full aluminum rod, okay? R&R &R aluminum rod. If you guys know John Rogers, uh, he has the IDS 240. He was a stick shift car at one point. These were his. These these rods went 755 at like 180 miles an hour. These rods outran Leroy in that in the in one of his videos, okay? Um, I mean, it's, that's not like a crazy thing but these these rods have been proven uh they are still in excellent condition obviously i mean there's completely nothing wrong with them um r and r thick aluminum rod so these are what's going to be going in this car very soon i need to get some billet mains and i need to get some uh, i'm probably going to contact real street and try to get their uh their uh, rs 1600 pistons so i'm going to try to get like a 10 and a half to one because i like higher compression so higher compression more power down low and if i'm going to have rods that are capable of handling you know 1600 to 2000 horsepower then hey might as well have some power down low also might as well utilize that turbo right there for everything it has so yes guys these are something i don't think i've showed you so here's a reveal of the rods that's going to be going in the old 240 we're done playing around with stock block on this car uh we will however be playing with the stock block on this car uh we're not going for some insane crazy numbers this car was it was 100 percent. i was 100 percent over a thousand horsepower in that video so this turbo right here uh is as a g42 
1450. This is a, essentially it's a 7975. This thing is massive. Like I'm telling you, like here's a PB blaster cam. This thing is ginormous. Uh, here's a freaking regular gauge. All right, that, this thing is huge. Uh, this turbo is good for 1450 horsepower. I was on 36 pounds of boost. Okay, 36 pounds of boost. Oh wow, look at that. It was even like it was working its way to sucking in. Uh, I'm gonna have to like pay attention to that. Looks like it's got a wear. It wears pretty uh, pretty good there. Uh, this actually is my screen from like my my deck. So it actually does pretty good. You guys can see that my turbine or my compressor wheel is still good. But this turbo is good for a lot. Uh, according to a lot of other dynographs I've seen of this exact turbo, 33 pounds of boost made like 10 40 or something like that on a similar setup and i was running 36 pounds of boost i'm not going to go out on a limb and say i was making 1100 horsepower but i will say that i guarantee i was at least a thousand and just for the simple fact of how the block let go like it is completely ridiculous hold on let me get this this is insane now look I'm pretty sure that's a rod cap, and I'm pretty sure that's a wrist pin clip, I'm pretty certain. My block is so destroyed. Like, I hope my, my oil pump is fine, um, which I'm probably not going to end up using that. So, if you guys <laughs> look on the other side here, there's a hole on this side too, and it straight, it bent my mount, okay? It straight bent my mount. Uh, we're going to be tearing this down today, so we're going to be able to see what the carnage actually is. Uh, that power, that's a lot of power to, you know, to be thrown out the side of an engine. You guys can see the kind of carnage that this has. I mean, it's straight broke, so. Uh, and we got a piece of my block. Oh, and then I was lucky enough, because I looked over last night, and I was like, oh wow, there's a hole on the other side. And then I found... <laughs> the rest of uh, the side of my block. So, yeah, at least I get to save a couple bolts. That's lovely. Maybe, look at that, it freaking, wow. That's literally insane. <laughs> it's crazy. So we're gonna be doing a tear down of rice box once again. Um, so, yeah, cue the time lapse. I'm gonna set the tripod up because, uh, yeah. I got this area to finally get stuff done. We no longer have to deal with that tiny freaking garage. Um, the best thing of all, though, is that we still have the Supra to go out and play, although we are not going to be going an insane amount of power with this car, so that way we can keep it running, okay? It's really unfortunate to say that rice box exploded. Like, it, this was way worse than it was last year. Don't think any metal went through the engine just because bearing material is a different than like a blown up engine. Uh, these were giant chunks of metal and uh, they would have got stopped by the pickup tube. Plus the fact that it was still running, I had no idea what the heck was happening. Like I, I had dead honest, I really thought it was my transmission and I'm so glad it wasn't. Uh, the transmissions are so damn expensive. I mean, I, I, I don't want to spend like another $8,000 on that thing. Um, but you guys can see how reliable that is. Like, that thing is crazy. You guys saw how fast that my, my speedometer, or like how fast my speed climb, you know, the draggy. It was 160 at the top of fourth right when it let go. So, I, I mean, I wasn't even on limiter yet. I, I still had like another 15 miles an hour. And I was going to try to I was gonna try to go on limiter with fourth, but uh, obviously my engine had other stories. Uh, stock bottom NGE, guys, uh, Those that's the limit. I am going to go wash up real quick and eat some dinner. And then I'm going to come back out here and start tearing this thing apart. And I'll start my live stream about 7 o'clock in this video. So it doesn't really matter at this point because uh, you guys will see the live stream before you see this video. So.
Okay, so that live stream was incredibly long, and I'm talking like long, long. It was like four hours of freaking live stream. I am freaking cold right now, and for all of you guys that stopped by and uh, checked out the live stream, you guys are probably obviously going to be seeing this like right afterwards. You guys all saw exactly what happened. So I totally wasn't able to film all that because I ended up doing it on the live stream. So I uh, appreciate all you guys that came by to the live stream. It's freaking awesome. I'll probably do some live streams some more because it was really cool talking to everybody. But I think it was, it was just awesome answering the questions and talking to people. So but anyways, let's jump into this. So for those of you that didn't watch the live stream, that is insanity. So uh, I did take this out once already to show everybody on the stream, uh, but I put it back in the exact same way that I found it. So this is exactly how the freaking piston was in the cylinder. Like on its side, I was looking down into the uh, into the spark plug hole, and you guys can see just how massive this hole is. Like, look at this ginormous chunk of my block, and that's like not even everything. There's like a bunch of pieces missing. So, not even on top of that. Come over on the other side. My engine mount is completely destroyed. My engine mount hit my oil pressure sensor, destroyed my pressure sensor. Um, I'm probably gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get in some new parts here. Uh, it's too much too much damage there so this thing is completely freaking toast uh the great news though is my cylinder head survived 100 percent the uh only thing that happened was my intake valves got hit which is not a big deal at all i can change those in a heartbeat and uh everything else is looking good so we're freaking golden and uh it's freaking awesome. I am so glad that the cylinder head came out of this alive. I did not want to have to redo all of my shims. That was one of the things I was not looking forward to having to do. So, <clears throat> so yeah, that's what we're looking forward to, guys. Um, this video is already going to be quite long anyways because I was doing a lot of talking. But I just wanted to pull out a little update here to show you guys all the carnage. Uh, we're going to be pulling the engine out probably tomorrow. Uh, because I'm going to be going to get another engine and I'm going to get my engine hoist on my my stand so I can get this engine out and start the progress on the new one like I was showing everybody else on the stream my aluminum rods that's what we're going to be doing in rice box next probably going to get some RS 1600 pistons and we're, we're going to be freaking cooking so yeah guys that is the freaking update and uh I'll be doing some more live streams. That was freaking awesome. I really enjoyed that. So that is the update on Ricebox. Completely exploded. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I'll be bringing back some new things for the car here pretty quick. So stay tuned for some uh, updates on the new engine and stuff. So that's going to be it for this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.